Hello, uh, my name is Matthew Stevenson, and this is another video preview of the uh, Range Rover 2010 skin project. Uh, in this video, I'm not actually going to show, do, show you anything on the skin this time, um, because I have now been working on the surround camera system. Um, for those of you who don't know this, but the uh, 2010-2011 Range Rovers um, come with a 5 camera um, surround system all the way around the vehicle. Um, here on the iPad you can see um, this is what the 2010 Range Rover screen looks like for the surround camera system. Uh, you've got five cameras, you've got uh, two of the bumpers which are these two here, you've got two looking down on the uh, wing mirrors and you've got uh, the rear camera at the rear. Um, that's what it looks like on the 2010 uh, Range Rover. Uh, now I've been trying to replicate that um, by uh, designing and building a piece of software, a custom piece of software in, in Visual Studio uh, using an 8 port um, DVR card for a computer. Uh, you can see here, it's, it's, I got, got mine off eBay. Um, it cost me around, I think it was about £45. Um, oh. They do range up to about £70. Now, I purchased a, a different car a couple of years ago and it was a four port one. Now, I just want to explain to you the, the differences between the eight port uh, one that I've purchased and this card that I purchased off eBay about three or four years ago. First thing is, right, this is a four port card, but the main difference between this and my new eight port card is if you look at the, on the middle of, the, uh, of this card you can see one um, video chip okay it's a it's the same chip as what's on the 8 port one but on the cheap card, this card cost me around 10 quid um, basically all these four inputs all share this one video chip now to write a piece of software to access each of these um, video inputs all at the same time running off one video chip is just immensely complex. So um, I've sourced a card that basically has eight inputs which is here, it comes out of here, it's a PCI card and it has eight tails, eight connectors. So instead of having them all on the back of the board it has this little um, tail that comes out and it has eight BNC connectors and I've just put some RCA adapters on the back of them just so I can put my uh, cameras in. Now, I haven't got five video cameras. Uh, I've not bought the cameras for the car yet. Um, so, just to te for testing purposes and development purposes, I'm just using two digital cameras. So I can plug it into any of the eight connections. So there's five there, because they're the five that are basically what would be in the car. And then I have three spare, which I can use for pretty much anything. Uh, now my plan for the three spare ones is I may put more cameras in the car, for example an internal camera in the cabin, um, but I also may use one of these video um, inputs for maybe a games console or pretty much anything that can output a video can go in here, so DVD players, um, anything basically can, can go out of here, Get, sorry go into the computer through these. What I'm going to show you now is the actual software that I've written. Now, the software um, is definitely nowhere near being finished. This is just um, a quick preview and quick uh, update for you guys because I've had a, a few emails over the last week or so, uh, people asking for an update on the project and where I'm up to. So, um, I just wanted to show you. Okay, I'm going to run the software. I'm in um, I'm in Visual Studio at the minute because I'm still working on it. Um, but I'm going to run the test program. Now, this is really a real, we are at the basic beginnings of this program, so it's, it's quite buggy. Um, it's a little bit slow at this minute in time because it uses a lot of processing power for all the video inputs. And I will show you that. I've got the task manager. So you can see the current processor is at obviously 0%. Uh, RAM is not really affected with video, it's, it's more processor. So we're at 0% because uh, we've got no video inputs just yet. So I've just uh, written the program, I've pressed play at the top, we are now running. So I'm just going to click this button 
and it will take a few seconds to load the initial interface which looks similar to this. I've not done any of the graphics yet so there's no car in the middle, the buttons don't look all nice and colourful. Uh, literally it is just the, the layout and the camera inputs. Okay, so I'm going to press the button. Okay, so it's just going to take a few seconds, or well, basically it grabs uh, the video inputs. I'm just going to turn my cameras on. So basically, there we go. Okay, now this we're in the software now. Um, as you can see, we've got the five video inputs. Blue uh, means blue is good. Blue means we are getting a video signal. Um, it's just that I haven't got a camera connected to it. So if I moved, if in fact if I move one of the cameras, so I've moved camera one into another connector. So there we go, got it down the side now. Anyway, right, okay, as you can see, um, we have five inputs. And if we look at the processor now, so I'll just get task manager back up, you can see it does quite, it hogs the processor. So this is a, the processor in this is a P4, 2.8 gigahertz, it's only a single core processor. Um, but it, it does the job at the minute. I'm going to leave that up for you so you can see the, the next, what it does to the minute. Here are the options, um, like what's on the Range Rover, apart from the bottom one here, which is just a test button so I can get the rear view up, because obviously I can't put it, uh, the car in reverse uh, in my, in the study. So, um, that's just a test button I've created. Um, if you look here, uh, there's the buttons that are obviously on the normal Range Rover. And the ones that I've um, been working on so far are the proximity view and rear camera view, so reversing camera. Okay, what I'm going to do, I'm going to load proximity view. Now, what happens here, um, I just want to explain to you how the program works and why there's a lag between pressing a, uh, a button and things happening. Uh, with video, um, what happens is I've, I've got um, the five video channels open. And when I click the button to change screens, what the program has to do is it has to close these video channels individually. So what's happening is, when I press the button, it's closing the video channel, it's stopping the video playback. So if I had a video, in fact if I turn my camera on again, if I wave my hand in front of it, you can see it's live now and it's real time. That's real me waving and it's appearing straight away. Uh, so there's no video lag, it's, it's 25, 30 frames per second, whichever PAL or NTSC you're using, it supports both. Um, you can see the video squashed because I've got um, stretch mode on, just so it fills that out, but you can turn that off. But if I wave my hand, and I'm, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to click. I can't click and wave actually, so while well, I'm holding the camera. So you can see there, you can see the hand. If I click proximity view, I've clicked it now. See, I can't, there's no, there's no movement because what it's done, it's closed the video channel. And there we go, we've changed screens. We are now in proximity view. So you can see it's live, so you would have the two front bumpers and you have the side the side camera. So you can see it's live, you can see my hand through the screen on the screen. <coughs> uh, on the real Range Rover, that is exactly what you see. Okay. So as you can see, we have the, the um, so if I turn the other camera on, you'll get them both on. You see, and they are live. But again, it does drain the processor. Now this is why I'm obviously the program is nowhere near ready because I need to get that processor usage down, um, which may be an issue. Um, because of the way uh, video comes into the system. I am restricted by the video card drivers uh, that comes with the card. So, um, that may be just an unfortunate side effect of the surround camera system and you may need a dual core processor uh, to run this system correctly. Or quickly, I should say. Anyway, that's what my proximity view looks like. and That is what the Range Rover one looks like. Two front cameras 
and the rear and the, and the left hand side camera. Mine, two front cameras and the side camera. Okay, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to show you the rear camera. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click back and again you can see my hand waving there when I press back. It has to close the, the video stream and you can't see it now, I'm waving, there's nothing moving and the processor usage has gone right down because the video stream is now closed. And now, what happens now is when I click close it has to reopen uh, the main stream with the five cameras and it has to reopen five video streams so that is why we have a bit of a lag. Now on the previous screen if you look at the processor usage the processor usage was around 60% on this screen there are five cameras where the other one was only three and we're only at 44% or 40%. Now the reason for that is um, the bigger you have these video previews in real time the slower the processor will be because it requires more processing power to render the larger images. Uh, my camera's just turned itself off, let's turn it back on again. That is the reason why you can have five video streams and these are live video streams so it doesn't matter how fast the videos are moving the processor speed will not go up so I'm waving my hand really fast in front of the camera you can see it how fast it is and the processor is not moving at all. If I turn my second camera on which is uh, right bumper there you can see processor hasn't gone up because these blue boxes are 30 frames per second live video streams or 25 frames per second in the UK for PAL TV. So it does not matter how many video streams you have on as long as they're small. Um, it's the bigger the video image, the slower the processor will be. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to show you a full size, full screen, well, full screen image, and it's going to be the reversing camera. So I'm going to click reverse, and again, it does the same thing. It has to close the five video streams on this screen, and it opens the one video screen on here. Now, because we've only got one camera and it's full screen, processor usage is not that bad. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to plug my video camera into socket 5. Okay, there we go. So look, there you go. 30 fr 25 frames per second, PAL, 30 frames per second, NTSC. So you see, I'm waving my hand really fast. There's no drop of frame and processor usage is at 16% which is very much acceptable for this size of image. Um, the image is squashed because it's not its native resolution. Um, that is, is it has to be a compromise because you can only obviously have um, the screen, the width um, of your screen, of your um, 7 inch touch screen. So, this black box, this frame, is basically the same resolution as my touchscreen. So I have a compromise of, of that the video is slightly squashed to get a full screen image. Um, so that is basically where I'm up to. So I'm just going to click back again. These buttons are, they don't look pretty at all. As I say, it is a complete development environment at the minute. Um, there is no no nice features, there's no nice interface, it's all um, very basic, we're still in programming mode I'm still I'm still working on it. Um, my next part of this um, bit of the project will be the enlarge button so on the Range Rover, on the normal Range Rover you can select two cameras or three cam. I oh, know it's two cameras you can select so if you selected the two front bumpers and clicked enlarge you will get them one on either side of the screen uh, that is my next part of the project I'm going to be working on. Um, so once I've done that, and also the special views, so you've got the curb view and you've also got um, junction view. So curb view is basically the two side mirrors pointing down the car so you can see as you're reversing into, the, into a car parking space you can see the two lines. And junction view is if you're coming out of um, say a country road that's got two hedges on either side and you can't see out onto the main road so you will edge out and these two cameras basically show you that way up the road and that way up the road um, again look you just look at their processor usage it's all to do with the video streams how large you've got them uh, right that's that's it thanks for for watching this video update